Hi, welcome to the Bella's blog. Glad you could join me. I wanted to talk about this dream I had. It was pretty scary. Um, about lightning. And like I say in all my dreams, please discern all my dreams. I won't take it personal. I want you to follow scripture and that means discern everything including dreams and words just if it's not biblical you know you know you got to discern it okay all right so I'm gonna start now so I had this dream about a very serious geomagnetic storm storm a, induced by a coronal mass injection a CME with a large solar flare disturbing the Earth's magnosphere, causing a huge ge geomagnetic storm. And in this dream, it had knocked out our electrical power. We had an electrical blackout. Uh, it disturbed all the radio communications, uh, the Earth orbiting satellites, global positioning systems, power grids, transformers they they were all not working they were unoperable due to this uh, cosmic ray flux and uh, it was in my dream it was nighttime and I was surrounded by lightning and thunder that we had to take shelter in um, our homes we couldn't go outside in fear that we would be hit by lightning that's how bad it was in this dream. I remember uh, looking out at a window and uh, watching these lightning all around me. You know, um, just dancing all around us. It was the worst storm I've ever seen in my life. I think it was the world's worst storm, to be honest, the way this dream was. And, um... I just know, I don't know in this dream if it was affected the whole world, but I just know, or you know, I didn't know how far the region was, but I just know it, all the power stations and all the electric transformers, and uh, it was just a straight electrical blackout, okay, and um, it was like the air was charged, and there was chaos from fire from the sky, and it was really scary, real scary. Like we couldn't, it was like we were in the dark, literally, because a lot of, I noticed in this dream, it seemed like we were not prepared at all. We had no um, phones, no radio, no TV, no internet, no nothing. We could, you know, our refrigerators were down, uh, nothing to cook with. Um... It was pretty bad, you guys. Really bad. And in this dream, I learned something from it. That it made me realize how unprepared people were. And how unprepared I was in this dream. Because of it. And um, it was really terrifying. Uh, I just remember being sheltered and feeling safe in the house. But we were trapped in the home while this uh, lightning storm was just uh, overwhelming around us and um, it was very scary because um, in this dream I woke up at 5.30 in the morning and I could not get back to sleep I was trembling I mean I was literally shaking from it but I had real, it made me realize a lot though. It was a really good experience for me to have this dream. Because I didn't even like think about this. Um, it just, it was just a really intense dream about lightning and the solar flare. Because I'd never put the two together. I didn't realize that, um, that CMEs could affect our atmosphere and, and cause a lightning storm, but it can because um, it the, the it just disturbs the whole atmosphere and it electrifies it. Um, let me tell you the scientific part of it. 
It's, uh, it says, uh, cosmetic rays from a supernova triggers a lightning storm and solar activity. Sun spits out charged particles that hits our atmosphere. Solar corona particles trigger aurora borealis. And that makes all those really um, active too during a storm like that. Then also a solar wind comes. These streams of particles that brings with them an enhanced magnetic field. And because our ozone layer is somewhat damaged, because that shields us from that, that it was able to come through. The, the energy cosmic rays were, were able to come through. Um, so it was altering the electrical properties of the air, influencing the rate and intensity of the lightning. So that's the scientific aspect of it. Um, in scripture, we continuously see Yahweh preserving and protecting his children while they are in the flood or in the lion's den or in a fiery furnace or in the belly of the whale. What happened to the people who were taken in the flood or were taken out from within Sodom and Gomorrah after Lot and his family were called out? We need to compare scripture with scripture and keep our lamps full of oil and be the five wise virgins Yahshua messiah is coming back for his bride and will reign on earth for a thousand years amen and we must endure the race to the finish line in his return he will gather the wheat his bride and destroy the chaff with fire so i mean this was literally a chaos from fire from the sky and in revelation 13 13 it says and doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And remember in Romans 15, 4, 7 also says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and an encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father and our Lord Jesus Christ accept one another then just as Jesus accepts you in order to bring praise to God. So, I mean, we have to learn to start reading our Bible. I notice a lot of people aren't reading their Bibles. They only just read their favorite scriptures, okay? And if you're wondering if uh, solar flares are biblical, it is. Because the sun unleashes major solar flares, you know. And that's just the, a reality. And, you know, you got to remember, if that happened and there was an EMP, electrical magnetic pulse, that would be an excellent time for our enemies to try to take advantage of us. I'm serious. With, we have all these enemies that that want to take us out, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens during this time. And the other thing is I wanted to read uh, Ezekiel. Wait, hold on. Let me see. I wanted to read. There was a couple. Oh, Matthew 24, 27. These are the manifestations of lightning. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. And then also in Luke 17, 24, the Bible says, For the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. In Revelation 8, 5, Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it at the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumbling flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Take note of that earthquake. Because you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. And then on top of that, we got to deal with an earthquake. Uh, Revelations 11, 19. Then God's temple in heaven was open, And within his temple was seed the ark of the covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumbles, peals of thunder, and, and earthquake. And there's earthquake and, and a great hailstorm. You know, God has removed his hands off of America, okay? And God is going to pour his judgment on us, and that's what's going to happen. And in this dream, it was in the dark, because we didn't have 
it seemed like we didn't have flashlights. We were going off the lightning, the light off the lightning. And, and I just read a bunch of scriptures. So lightning is biblical, you bet. His word mentions the phenomenon quite often in historical accounts. In Psalms 29, 7, the voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. You know, if he's removed his hands and he's doing judgment, that's his way of strike strike with flashes of lightning. In Psalm 77, 18, it says, Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and, and awake, awoken. Psalms 97, 4 says, His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. And that's so true because in my dream when I was in the shelter, I was just trembling. I mean, I was scared, you know. And then when I woke up, I was still trembling. So it was, that is such a true scripture. 97, 4 in Psalms. And also Psalms 135, 7 says, He makes cloud rise from the end of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouse. And see how it says, brings out the wind? Well, that's so true because the solar wind. Because that's what's going to be affected is there's going to be a solar wind. Psalms 148.8 says, Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. There you go, stormy winds that do his bidding. In Zechariah 9.14, Then the Lord will appear over them. His arrows will flash like lightning. The Sovereign Lord will sound the trumpet, and He will march in the storm of the south. So, it's very biblical. Very biblical. And I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, in this dream, what I learned was that we need to be prepared. Because in this dream, there was looting too. There was... People stealing food and water, and, and the only thing that's going to be working are vehicles that are the old cars. Everything that's old. But you got to remember, if you're driving those cars, people are going to try to kill you for your car if you're like the only running car on the road. Um, just like in that movie, War of, of the Worlds, with uh, Tom Cruise. Remember when everyone was trying to take his car away from him? Remember what happened? Same thing that's going to happen. They're, everybody's going to be going crazy. They're not going to be prepared. I, I know in this dream we weren't prepared. So it's probably a really, really good time to start thinking about if something like this occurs, how are you going to cook your food? You know, do you have wa you know, uh, something like to cook with, that, with, with propane or some kind of uh, thing to cook with? Do you have extra food and water for your family and pets? And these are things that you need to think about before this happens I get I mean that's what I learned out of this because in this dream like I said we were not prepared I mean I'm prepared spiritually but I wasn't prepared physically for it so um, until Jesus arrives we need to be prepared and we need to be able to take care of our families and guard our homes and I would probably suggest that when this occurs and if it occurs that um, that we have some, um, you know, we have to protect ourselves from people that are going to try to invade our homes. So they possibly could hurt our, us or our family, so we have to be able to prepare ourselves to fight back. And, um, you know, to protect ourselves by keeping things locked up, uh, boarding windows up or something, having something ready for it. And um, having extra food and water also... Um, you know, I would stay indoors. I would not venture out. And, and I'd be in my prayer closet praying for uh, the Lord to protect us. Because, you know, in 91.1 in Psalms, it says that ask for Jesus to assign angels to you. And he will. So that would probably be the best thing to do during this time. Is asking Jesus to put a hedge of protection on you. Um, to protect you and your family. Just uh, draw your curtains. I didn't see no three days of darkness, but I did notice that there was, this happened for a while. And if this really did occur, you know, this could last from three days to a year, or two years, three years. I mean, this would literally put us back into the 1800s. I mean, literally. Can you imagine how everybody would panic? Because you can't even go to get food um, they can't ring you up. You can't access your money. 
You can't access a gas station. You can't access your car. See, I have an old car. So my car would be able to drive. I, would, I wouldn't even risk driving it. I, I seriously wouldn't. Because I wouldn't want people to know that I had a running vehicle. Alright, well, God bless you guys. Be safe. Love you. Bye.